So, I've been playing a lot of Simple Planes lately. It's a fantastic game allowing you to build and fly pretty much any plane, car, boat or whatever you like. It's easy to use and has an incredible amount of depth, plus it only costs £2.50. Yeah. I got into the game because I saw someone made an F1 car in it and it got me excited to try and recreate some of the awesome technology and game changing cars from motorsport history. So while I'm building an approximation of the all-conquering Lotus 79, first here's some incredibly truncated history. The concept of aerodynamics was largely ignored by motorsport until the mid-1960s, when innovative teams like Chaparral and Lotus took aeroplane-style wings that usually create lift and inverted them to generate negative lift or downforce. This pushes the tyres into the ground to provide much better grip and make the cars hugely faster through the corners. It also gave better traction and a smoother, more predictable car. It was a total game changer, cars rapidly got faster and motorsport never looked back. In the late 70s, Lotus founder and chief boffin Colin Chapman was looking at new ways to generate much more downforce with less drag than the rather uncivilised wings in use back then. What he came up with was to profile the underside of the car to act as one giant wing, creating a low pressure zone underneath the car known as ground effect, causing air to flow faster, effectively sucking it to the ground, and by sealing the wing to the ground with low hanging side skirts, it increased the efficiency even more, generating what's called a Venturi effect. After developing it for a year, the concept was perfected with the Lotus 79. When introduced, it won 6 out of the 11 races it was entered in in the 1978 F1 season, cruising to both the drivers' and constructors' titles. Immediately, every other car was redundant, and teams now had to use ground effect to be competitive. What culminated was my personal favourite era of F1, and led to some incredibly far out designs. Ground effect was eventually banned for good in 1982 due to safety concerns and the cars becoming too fast and the development was too expensive. And since then, undercar aerodynamics in F1 has been standardised and heavily regulated. So I've built a rough version of the Lotus 79 in simple planes. It has all the hallmarks of a 70s F1 car. Big wide tyres, rudimentary wings, mid-engine rear wheel drive, big bouncy suspension, all the good stuff. The game of course isn't 100% accurate, so to illustrate what I'm trying to show, I ended up giving the car 1200 horsepower and made those big old tyres a bit less grippy to get it close to how a real 1970s car would handle. This model here is the Control. It features no ground effect aerodynamics, the side pods are made out of the game's structural panels which have no simulated wing physics. They are flat, high up, and the sides don't seal to the ground. The car as it is is pretty good and fun to drive. It is somewhat optimistically fast in a straight line though. But with only those basic 1970s wings, it struggles on a bumpy twisting circuit like the Simple Plane's Motor Mirage level. The car understeers, the rear steps out, bumps and curbs upset the car's balance, it's a bit of a handful, and you crash a lot. When I finally managed to get a good lap, it was a respectable 1 minute 4. Now what's going wrong is that the aerodynamics can't contain the car's power. According to iRacing at least, the Lotus 79 weighed only a minuscule 575 kilograms with a power output of 475 horsepower from the mighty Ford Cosworth DFV engine, giving it a power to weight ratio of a huge 826 horsepower a tonne. Due to the game not being totally accurate, our car comes out to about 1800 kilograms and with 1200 horsepower we get about 660 horsepower a tonne, barely 75% of the real thing, and without ground effect, it's still a handful. The car needs much more downforce to put all that power to use. And that's why the Lotus 79 was so successful. Cars of the era slid around on track at all four wheels and required a lot of careful driver input to control. With the massive amount of grip added with the Lotus, it had better traction, was far more stable and called it at much higher speeds in the competition. So to tangibly illustrate the difference the Lotus 79's ground effect made, I changed the control car by replacing the inert bottom panels for the game's profiled structural wing which although looking the same, acts as an aerofoil. I took the flat bottom profiled wing, which traditionally provides lift on a plane, and inverted it to provide downforce. By angling the wing up, you create that low pressure zone towards the rear, causing air to accelerate under the front of the wing as it compresses, before rushing into the low pressure zone and generating downforce. I also sealed the sides of the car off with these low running skirts, that sit as close to the ground as I could get them, allowing almost none of the air to escape out the sides and increase that venturi effect. It's easy to show how this works. As I accelerate the car in a straight line, the massive amount of downforce being generated by the ground effect wings pulls the car lower. This pulling makes the tyres grip the road better, allowing them to take corners at higher speeds. It also seals off the side skirts, increasing the pressure difference and making the effect even stronger. If I take us back to Motor Mirage, the ground effect car fares much better. 
the car has better traction, bumps and curves no longer a concern, and the car turns far more effectively and at much higher speeds. I'm not having to slow down anywhere near as much to make the corners, and the rear of the car stays planted and stable. It laps in only 57 seconds, a good 10% faster than the control car. If I put the two laps together side by side, we see that the control car initially gets away better due to it weighing less and having less drag than the ground effect car, but as soon as we get up to speed, the ground effect car glides over the bumps that upset the control, it carries far more apex speed into the corners, and accelerates faster on corner exit. Apart from the wing, these two cars are identical, but it makes all the difference. You also crash it far less. As the cars you build get faster, this effect scales up massively. I built some incredibly fast cars in this game capable of taking corners flat out at almost 600 miles an hour due to huge ground effect wings. The scalability of aerodynamics is so incredible in this game, it means you can build absurdly fast cars. So much I reckon I've probably got the world record for the airstrip drag level, with only 23 second time coming from my car with huge aerodynamics. But that's another story. Thanks for watching, I've had a lot of fun making this, so let me know in the comments if there are any other things you'd like to see me illustrate using Simple Planes. It's such a fantastic game, I've been completely obsessed with it for over a year, definitely go and get it if you're into anything like this. I'd also love it if you give a like on the video, sub if you haven't already, I stream and upload pretty regularly on here doing a variety of things, so there's something for everyone, I'll see you soon, bye.